Okay, so here's what I'd like you folks to do, okay? Everyone should have received the preliminary email with the statement of understanding. Can you all see me? I know some of you don't have a camera. But this was the statement of understanding we need to update all the information that we require in our AFIRST database exclusive to Airman Family Readiness Centers. It's a dual-sided form on the back is what we call the PRI, Personal Readiness Inventory. We want to have you fill this out so we can gauge where you're at with all military work-life matters. Uh, if you're being involuntarily separated, uh, we understand you may mark retention very, very low. Next, you should have uh, filled out and returned the uh, individual counseling form. This has been a result of the NDAA October 2019 last year, so that we may better serve you and what your needs are versus doing a peanut butter spread and making everybody do the same thing. So I want to make sure everybody understands that. Okay, now we're going to give out the tier assignments for those of you that did submit your individual counseling form. Please make sure you write this down, but you don't necessarily have to write it down. If you log into your DOD TAP dashboard, you're going to automatically see what tier you've been placed into as a result of uh, your filled out individual counseling form. Is everyone following? So again, Please fill out the SOU and the PRI form that was sent in the initial email. We need to get that back. You know if you filled it out and returned it to us or not. So we have updated accurate data. Most important, your personal email address because I know lots of you are like me. You're not always able to get on your government email and these are gonna be important emails for you to receive. And none of it is PII that will be generated from me. So it's going to be imperative for you to pay attention, especially today, because we're going to show you lots of resources that will help you. But here's what we also know and we want to recommend you do. If you feel that a lot of the information is lacking to you, we, AFPC, encourages all of you to please attend one in person, okay? Because a lot of things are drawn that way that you maybe miss out on when you're doing all of this stuff virtually. All of you have the TAP Benefits and Services Guide, the 65 pages we sent, correct? Yes, okay, that'll be the ultimate compliment that will accompany this brief today, okay? Uh, this is the script that you would normally see that we're mandated to cover for you, okay? But that guide is going to be the same thing as this script. So basically, you guys all have it with even more detailed information, okay? Next, she will not be here today. This is known as the SHIPI physical, okay? Separation history, physical examination. This is a mandatory requirement that all service members must have prior to your exit from service. We will make sure we send you this trifold, okay, with the accompanying slides from uh, Nurse Danielle Franklin. She's at the BOMSI office here at Edwards. So you will have all of this information. I will make sure I enclose this trifold with the slides and send all of you that are in attendance virtually today, okay? All I do know is this, within 72 hours of receipt of orders, you must contact Danielle Franklin, the nurse at the BOMSI clinic, to get on their scheduler, okay? So you will get this. All of you, most of you did initiate your TAP DODTAP.mil form, the e-form, okay? You have these instructions, Mill Connect Portland instructions to how to do all that with some great useful resources that we want you to refer to. We're going to show them to you today as well. So please retain this, hold on to this Mill Portland instruction sheet because this will tell you exactly how to log in and get two signatures that we need to get. One will be for today that we must collect at the beginning, and then everybody is required to do what's called the capstone event, where we, you show and demonstrate you've met all the career readiness standards as dictated by DOD and the branch of service. Are we all Air Force, including myself? Yay, all right, so please retain this. Please make sure you digital sign, especially today. Okay, most of you have done that, so thank you.
Next, I'm also going to send with the shippy trifold these great things that you would normally get when you were here in person, okay? Nine things veterans wish they knew before they exited service. So some of it you know, I'm just going to go over a little bit. One we already talked about. Number one is a physical. You're going to ensure you get all your medical documents. We suggest you get them on a CD and literally put that CD in a safe place, okay? Don't be like me, my archaic time of paper copies only, they told us to do the same thing. And of course I kept all of my records, but throughout time I lost them. Now I have tinnitus, which I've been uh, having to deal with. It's very, very bad in my right ear. I had to write to the archives in St. Louis, Missouri, and they sent me my records. Someone has a phone there. They sent me my records. It came back pretty big. I went through every stitch of my medical records, okay? Not one auditory exam, and I know they did one prior to my exit. Not one lab draw blood result. I know they did that prior to my exit. So that's something for you folks to consider. So make sure you get your medical records and you literally keep them in a safe place. You may be relatively healthy upon exit, but later on down the road, things may exacerbate or turn up out of nowhere. You're going to have that documented. In the nursing world, they say, if it's not documented, it never happened, okay? Something to think about. Number two, establish your savings account. This is especially important for everybody that's going to be a separate especially if maybe you're the primary breadwinner or a single parent. You should already be planning your savings. Anyone tell me as a rule how many months uh, emergency savings fund you should have? Six. Three to six. Can you have, yeah, can you have more than six? Absolutely, right? The more uh, financially prepared you are, the better. Number three, get your education or at least start it. We know this as a normal rule. The Air Force expects you, if you're enlisted, to be exiting with what minimally per education? CCAF, your associate degree at a minimum, right? Number four, military and civilian life has similarities. I say not much. Five, there are also differences. I say a whole lot more. Six, embrace civilian life. Are you all ready to embrace civilian life? Yes. How do you know you're ready? Yeah, only you can answer that. Because it, it Go ahead. makes me happy when I think about it. Well, wonderful. <laughs> but please remember, grass is not always greener. A big focus I have lately is... Uh, there's a lot of toxic leadership, as we know, in military environments. I, I guess I'll say that. Do you agree with that or no? Yes. Okay. But toxic environments don't go away just because you're going into the civilian world. That's just a reality of fact of life. People don't leave good jobs. They leave bad leaders, bad, leaders, bad bosses, bad environments. Uh, seven, back to that medical topic, document everything, can't stress that enough. So even though you have knee problems, your knee is already twinging from your annual PT runs, make sure that that's documented. Eight, finding a job will not be easy. It's not easy now, especially with COVID, right? They laid off a lot of people. So let's talk about that real quick. Are you thinking about getting into a job that may be recession proof? COVID-19 proof? Only you can answer that, right? And then nine, learn the VA processes ahead of time. So we will send this all to you via email. As you join the VA family, things begin to get very, very convoluted. You have so many veteran services offices or organizations that say, yeah, we're here to help you, the veteran. And they'll give you all these promises, say how wonderful they're gonna be for you, especially when you navigate to try to file your VA disability rating. And then guess what? They oftentimes fall short 
They may even lose your claim, keep copies of everything, okay? Something to think about, but you will get that. Uh, one thing everybody should ultimately do, okay, even if you do a virtual tap this month, you want to make sure you come here in person for the VA benefits and services brief. That's a mandatory requirement for everybody. So we highly suggest you do that. When we send you the virtual instructions for TAP April curriculum, you're going to see the portion from uh, Ms. Elizabeth Bush. The, she is the VA counselor, presenter that normally comes out with the directions on how to download the VA participant guide, the VA benefits and services guide as well. So we are here for you. I'm able to get emails. It's spotty sketchy out at my home with my government laptop. So again, any kind of information that you need to send to me that's PII, of course, do not send it to my personal email. Send that to my government email, okay? So TAP curriculum is a five-day workshop that includes the benefits and services brief. It includes resiliency. We're gonna talk about that today. And then it includes the DOL one day, which is just an overview of what the DOL does for you as it pertains to finding or seeking employment, okay? Next two days, it's always on a Wednesday or Thursday, is the curriculum that's pertinent to what your priorities are. So say you already have an advanced degree, you're a primary breadwinner for your family, pretty much you're gonna go the employment workshop route, okay? Though then we have the vocational route that's part of the TAP curriculum, for those that want to go in vocational pursuits. Not everyone wants to go to a four-year college. However, the reality now is, especially Air Force members, we see a lot of them wanting to go to the education route, which is another curriculum, because we call it, and I hope this is not anyone out there, but we call it, they're chasing the BAH. Yeah, I got these wonderful post 9-11 benefits. I'm gonna do my research. They do their research to find out what area they want to live in that will pay them the highest in BAH. And then though, what type of majors you think that they're pursuing? This is as a rule, this is my observation, this is who I talk to, I have a professor that I work with, I ask him extensively what uh, his experience is with post 9-11 vets. But anyone want, anyone want to guess what major these folks are normally pursuing? And we're not, psychology. yeah, psychology. We're not slamming these though, but psychology, liberal arts. Yeah. So they want to max their BAH. They want to follow the path of least resistance, take the easiest major they can possibly squeak through, right? While they're collecting that. My humble opinion, then you're already in higher education for the wrong reason, right? Then you get that degree that's ultimately worthless. You all have heard it, right? These are things to ponder. These are things to think about, everyone, okay? Any other questions? Anything at all? Is COVID-19 affecting your psyche, anyone? Just a general question. How are you being busy? How are you maintaining your productivity, your health? We all are told to be resilient. So are you practicing the four pillars of wellness? Mental, physical, social. What's the last one? Spiritual. spiritual. Excellent. Do you have to be religious to be spiritual? No, good answer. To me, spirituality sometimes is uh, me out on the water on my kayak with my service dog. Can't get any more spiritual than that for me, but that's just me. How about listening to music? Let me tell you, music is my therapist. Are you all ready for the six keys to a successful transition? Please write these down. Key number one, prepare as far in advance as possible 
Okay, there's something out there called the military life cycle model that was adopted at the end of fiscal year 14. What that life cycle model did was encourage all service members, and we'll show you that you may not be able to see it, but you have it on the slide deck. Okay, what that model did was encourage all service members to evaluate. That's all right. Evaluate their career readiness at all of the main touch points. So even if you're a first termer, you should already ultimately be knowing that eventually you're going to separate service. So what should I do while I'm still in the service to prepare for my transition when I have to market myself for employment? Okay. So preparation is very, very important. Or plan, I should say. Plan is number one. Key to this. So plan and as far advance as possible. That's why they adopted under the NDAA of 2019. All of you should have done this no later than 365 days a year prior to your separation or retirement. You want to know why they enacted this? Because they found so many service members only show up to transition when they're inside six months. Sometimes even worse, they're inside 90 days. So TAP, the whole TAP curriculum, everybody, is so inundated with information. You're going to experience a little of it today. We're going to hit you with so much information. Okay? Can you imagine doing this when you're within 90 days? You're already thinking about your out processing, where you're going to live, yada, yada, yada. All of that stuff is just going to be a blurry haze. So we suggest, please, you start it today. Be engaged with the whole process. We know you have lots going on right now, but all of this stuff is going to be important for you. Okay, so plan and as far advanced as possible. They also came out with what they call the DOD Skill Bridge Program. Any of you know what that is or have heard about it? Yes. Okay, so whoever said yes, go ahead and tell, let everybody know. Uh, it's like a program that lets you get out of the military in six months uh, before you're supposed to get out to, uh, with like companies around your surrounding area to help you transition into a job. Exactly. Like exactly. Like so you have to have more than six months retained yeah, ability. That's, right? so yeah. that's what I got from that. Yeah. You have to be more than six months of retainability. And all of you that may be interested that have the retainability, you're going to contact our education office. I'll give you a name. Her name is Ms. Vita Evans. So contact Vita Evans. Say you're interested in the SkillBridge program. You have to be vetted through a participating agency, employer, whatever it may be, education. Eve, since you asked, you asked that, they have all that information on the career skills. Here's what else we must add. It's still contingent upon mission requirements and commander's approval. So if you want to pursue a career skills program, you're in the last six months of active duty, still collecting a paycheck, you're dressing in civilian clothes like I'm dressed in today, man, talk about fast-tracking your transition. You are well on your way. So something very, very important to consider, that's a wonderful program. I hear a lot of service members get hired to being a good uh, name brand, and we're going to talk about that. Okay, so... Key number one to a successful transition, plan and as far advanced as possible. Now, at a minimum, it has to be no later than a year prior to your separation or retirement. Okay. Key number two to a successful transition, prepare as you're planning. There's some things you can still do to prepare, although you're still locked into your military service commitment, correct? Yes? Okay. You're going to hear us talk about uh, Air Force pool today for enlisted members. So you can be pursuing Air Force pool, preparing, that will help you when you exit, right? So plan, prepare. Key number three is execute or implement your planning and your preparation. If you plan, do a little preparing, you're not actually implementing. Basically, you're wasting your time, don't you think? Yes? Okay. Next three keys, even more important, Research. Research entails a whole lot, doesn't it? What careers are projected to grow? A lot of them are computer, especially now with COVID, right? AI, automation, 
A lot of these are putting people out of work, as we've already seen, right? Any of you heard of an agency known as DARPA? Okay, it's an actual government agency. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. They're doing all this AI stuff. About two and a half years ago, the AI flew and landed a 737. So possibly, what could that be handwriting on the wall for aviators? Their jobs. It could automate some of them out of a job, right? Maybe they only want one human pilot in the cockpit. Anyone heard of Captain Sully? Okay, so we all know what he did on the Hudson that one day after the geese strike, right? Any of you see the movie? Yeah. So I just thought, oh, he was celebrated as a hero. He saved all those souls that day, and boom, everything's great. No, they were like, oh, okay, we did some models, simulated models, if you've seen the movie. I won't give all of it away. And according to the simulated models, Captain Sully, you could have turned that plane around and then, uh, safely landed it on an airstrip. But he's like, no, did you account for this? And then suddenly, long story short, he was vindicated from being driven through the ringer with the NTSB. Okay, What else, though, is significant about Captain Sully? Anyone know? Anyone know? Okay. So after his miraculous feat, eventually they said, my gosh, Captain Sully, how did you remain calm and keep your composure under that highly stressful event? Here's what he said. Oh, it was easy. I was an Air Force pilot back in Vietnam. I flew the F-4s. I was the safety guy. So a lot of folks don't know that. Captain Sully was an Air Force pilot in Vietnam. He flew the F-4 Phantom. He's a motivational speaker throughout the nation now, goes all over the place giving motivational speeches. Check him out, check out the movie. Okay, so that is key number four, research. Key number five. Oh, let's go on research more. Research where you're going to live. You're gonna hear us talk about that later on in this briefing. Do you know where you wanna settle or where you wanna live right now? Okay, that's a good thing. Some of you, if you're staying in California, get ready. The state's going to dig deep into your pockets like they're already doing, right? Or if you're retiring, you may want to consider, hey, do I really want to stay in California? They're going to tax my retired pay. There's a bill in Congress. I don't know where it's going to go, but they're going to say they don't want to. They're trying to push where they don't tax any kind of military retirement. So look that up. Do your own uh, research, pun intended to see where that bill is and support it. Because no military retiree should have their retirement tax, in my humble opinion, okay? So research, yes, entails a whole lot. Next one, key number five is market. Market yourself. You're gonna be a product that you're gonna be presenting to the consumer, otherwise known as the employer, right? Market yourself as a name brand product. You're gonna be able, once you go through the TAP program, to see according to each career that's dictated by the Dictionary of Occupational Titles through the ONET, you're gonna hear us talk about it today. All of that information is on there of what that particular occupation requires. Hard skills, soft skills, technical skills, the whole shebang. Just having that knowledge alone, you're gonna be able to market yourself as a name brand. A lot of civilians don't even have access or don't even know about that resource known as the ONET online. So only you can answer that question. Are you going to be a name brand product or are you going to be a generic? If you're a generic, you get what you pay for as we all know, right? Okay, enough said. Last key. Studies have indicated military service members are weak in this area. Anyone want to guess it starts with an N. Networking, that's what we're doing now, right? Social networking, yeah. They say military service members only network normally or typically with other service members. This is important that we start branching out with others, okay? 
that are outside our fields, even outside our branches of service. Okay, that's why mentorship we stress is important. I want to show you folks something real quick. Hold on, please. Okay, so some of you may be already thinking, and this is common with security forces members. Upon exit or transition, they want nothing to do with law enforcement. So they're already doing some research into other careers they want to get into. We've partnered with these folks. They're known as the American Corporate Partners. They are very military friendly. They even have women veterans programs. So if this is you or any of you should take advantage of this, plug in with the American Corporate Partners. They're wonderful people. They will get you a one-on-one -on -one mentor already established in their field so you can pick their brain. They will give you the lowdown A to Z on everything you could possibly know about that said career. What if they tell you something that's disqualifying? They tell you, oh yeah, if you want to get in this field, you're going to be on call 24 seven, even if it's a holiday. How many of you would still pursue that? Some of you, I don't know, but maybe not all of you, right? Get plugged in with a mentor, start networking. So those are the six keys to a successful transition. Anyone write them down? Okay, we highly suggest you do that. Again, friendly reminder, please be engaged in your own TAP processes, in your own transition. This is important for you. You are now embarking on the most important mission ever Believe it or not, it wasn't your mission in the Air Force. Now it's going to be, what do you think will be your mission? Transition. Your mission will be to be successful and prosperous for you, yourself, and your family, especially if you're a primary breadwinner. What an awesome mission that is, right? Stay resilient. Resiliency is very, very important as we already discussed. So now we're going to move on to the presentation. Any other questions before we do that? Okay. Okay, so here's the introduction. We're mandated by Title 10, Chapter 58, Section 1142 to give you this uh, mandatory pre-separation brief. This is your initial point of all things transition. Please be following along with the TAP benefits and services guide that we sent to all of you. Talk to about agencies, benefits, and services that are available to you, not only now, but more importantly after you transition. Answer any questions that any of you may have today. And of course, again, describing all the assistances and agencies that are in place to help you. So everyone know the purpose of why you are going through this brief today. Okay. Here's the military life cycle model, or pull it up, you have the slide deck. This is what encouraged all service members to be gauging their career readiness all throughout their military career. Okay. First term airmen can attend this briefing because a lot of service members, we already talked about this, they come in only for the post 9-11, which is a very, very valuable benefit. Okay, I'm one of them old geezers. I'm quite envious of this post 9-11, I must admit. You want to know what I had post Vietnam era? Anyone want to know? Oh, I'm going to tell you anyway, because I want you to realize the value of your post 9-11. Because a lot of you don't know this, okay? Post 9-11 with what's called yellow ribbon programs, which means you could be accepted to an Ivy League college. You want to know the value of that with yellow ribbon? $330,000 post 9-11 with yellow ribbon. Dean, former Air Force member, post-Vietnam era, we had something called the VEEP program, Veterans Education Assistance Plan. For every dollar you contribute into it, the government matched it by two. You want to know what the max 
benefit was for education under the VEEP program? Anyone want to guess? Take a guess, someone, please. $40,000. Oh, I would have wished. Ready. Here, here it comes. $5,400 under V. What can that buy you in higher education nowadays? Maybe a, not even a semester, right? Or maybe a few books. Yeah. So again, we want to stress, please don't squander that very valuable post-9-11. It's very, very valuable. They say in the future, only a few people will hold higher education degrees. The very wealthy, military service veterans, or very indebted, as we all know. Enough said. So this is basically the scheme of the whole program, the schematic. We want all of you to initiate your ITP. That's where the individual transition plan, they've reduced it down now to five pages. You can pull that off the DOD TAP website, okay, under resources and tools, along with the TAP benefits and services guide that you have in front of you. Then you will begin preparing for employment or any of the tracks that are pertinent to what your career goals are. So some of you, yes, may be going straight into employment. So you will take all things employment track. Some of you are pursuing post 9-11 that we just talked about. You will be taking that track. All things education will be held and conducted at the education office, okay? Already gave all of you a name to an educational counselor. I'll repeat it. Her name is Ms. Vita Evans. And then entrepreneurship, last but not least. Any of you want to become small business owners? Okay, a lot of benefits for veteran business owners. They say veterans make the best entrepreneurs out there. You know why? They're do-whatever-it-takes type of people to get the job done, no matter how long, when, where, what they need to do. But you will be married to the business, speaking from experience. So if you decide to become an entrepreneur, tread lightly or get involved in that track. We hold that track quarterly because we don't get enough interest in it from veterans. So if you're interested in pursuing the entrepreneurship track, I'm going to give this to you. Just Google it. Google Boots to Business, and then I'll have you build a profile on what's called sbavetsforce.com. When you're in that profile, you can see all of the Boots to Business events, not only on military installations where you're at, but also in the local community. So that's the one track you don't necessarily have to attend on a military installation. Everyone catch that? Okay. So once you're through all of the TAP curriculum, you're going to hear us talk about this ad nauseum today. At least 10 times we're going to mention it, okay? Once you're through with the TAP curriculum items, there's one final thing that everybody must complete. It's known as the capstone event, okay? The capstone event we, help, we hold on the first and last Fridays of the month. Anywhere from 8.30 to 11.30 that is convenient for you, i.e. the service member. That capstone event is when you come in and you show us all of your career readiness standards that you met or been mandated to meet under your assigned tier. Okay? So if you want to know what they are, you're going to log into your DOD TAP dashboard. It's already going to have your assigned tier, and it's already going to show you the mandated items that you must show to us at your capstone event. Any questions on that? So this is the first time I think we're mentioning capstone. When should you complete the capstone event? No later than 90 days prior to your out-processing appointment. Okay? Everyone understand now capstone? That is the final culminating TAP event where we complete your form. That is your pass go, collect $200. You must have that printed, completed form when you out-process. Please make sure you understand that, okay? So this should be everybody's objective, right? Obtain a degree, become employed. Obtain a degree and or certificate, become employed. Start a business or maybe do all three of them. Now, depending on maybe how long you received your degree, 
Certificates are holding a lot more weight now, okay? Even if you hold an older degree, how are you making sure you're updating your knowledge base into the modern era? What have you received your degree back in 1999? How are you staying relevant? Some careers dictated by mandating you do continuing education credits. Some of you may know that already, right? So this is the military life cycle model. Those of you that supervise other military members, please make sure you tell them, come to precept no later than how many days? Question review. Huh? Please come into precept no later than 365 days to their projected exit. That way they can still participate if they're improved in the career skills program, right? Collecting their active duty pay their last six months, already dressing in civilian clothes. Very, very, very important program that a lot of folks are automatically making themselves ineligible because they come in under six months. So this is a new initiative under NDAA 19 last year that we're still trying to get out to the base populaces. So please help us, help your fellow service members, let them know you must go see the Airman Family Readiness Center TAP program if you're considering to get out no later than 365 days prior or a year prior to their projected exit, okay? Okay, so later on after the first break, we're almost to the first break, we're going to demonstrate or initiate someone's form for them. So we'll bypass all of this information. What are the effects of a career change? Let's talk a little bit more about resiliency. What are the effects of a career change? Ultimately, you're probably going to feel stressed out, right? Stress can be good and bad, correct? Okay, so how do you cope in times of stress? What is your number one go-to? We kind of already talked a little bit about these. Four pillars of wellness, right? Mental, physical, social, spiritual, right? Do you know what your coping techniques are? What is your normal go-to and how they may help you? Additional resources, military one source, great resource for all of you, right? PCSing, financially, mental health counseling, TAP even, a whole slew of things. So go visit military one source if you want to look for additional resources. The military family life counselor or consultant, they have one in any AFRC, okay? You can make an appointment to talk to them to relate to your mental health, say if you're dealing with stresses through your marital life, uh, work life, anything at all. Basically just life in general, someone that you can talk to. 12 free visits, possibly more. They don't keep any records. So I don't know if that's important to some of you, it may be. Chaplain, talking about the spiritual pillar of wellness. Chaplain, wonderful caring individuals, especially here, I've worked with all of them. You can go talk to one of the chaplains. I have a question, do you have to have a religious affiliation to talk to any of the chaplains? No. no, you all know if you talk to a chaplain that that's privileged communication. They cannot go out and talk about what you discuss to anyone else, right? You all know that, correct? Yeah. Something that was shocking for me, and I should have known better, we had the command staff chaplain come maybe two years ago. And he said the hardest thing for me, though, because we've seen the uptick in suicides, right? This command staff chaplain said the hardest thing for him is someone actually says they're going to kill themselves to him. He cannot go and tell anyone. That's kind of shocking, isn't it? But that's what's under privileged communication. Family advocacy. Back in my day in the Air Force, they used to refer to them as mental health slash social action. So based on that name alone, that old name, you avoided them like the plague. Because if you had to go see mental health social actions, normally you're going through something adverse. Or they're wanting to kick you out or you did something. Now, of course, they renamed it to family advocacy, kinder, friendlier. They do things to help you versus harm you. <clears throat> Anger management classes. The thing we're talking about now, resiliency classes. And parenting. Bundles to babies for expectant mothers. They do a lot of things to help you. So take advantage of all of these services, okay? 
Start taking responsibility for your transition now. So the whole idea is to get you from feeling these emotions that I remember feeling when I separated from the Air Force, to you're doing all of them six keys, and you're well ready, at least you're hoping you are, right? To where you reach the excitement phase. You can't wait to separate from service because you have so many great plans to pursue. Your actual commitment is holding you back. I had a master sergeant tell me that. What a good place to be in, don't you think? Wouldn't that be a good place to be in? I am so ready. I am so ready to roll. The only thing holding me back is my commitment time left in the Air Force. Not a bad place to be in. But maybe you're in that gray area when uh, you're not getting any offers for employment. Something also to consider. So it's all about timing. But there's plenty of things that you all can do. Any questions so far? Before we take a 10 minute break, do any of you know what the top five stresses are in life? Shoot some at me. I want this to be interactive, not just me up here talking today. Money. Work. Money. Yes, work. Relationships. Relationship. Relationship. Family. Family. What else? Oh, I love that one. Hey, you guys are a smart group. So I'll go over them in the order I remember them. Death in the family, divorce, loss of job, loss of income, battling a major health condition. Thank you for those of you that said that. And then the majority of you may be doing the last one. Starts with an M. Move. Moving. Those are the top five stressors in life. We've all seen it. I've seen it being a survivor benefit plan counselor. Remember, puts in their retirement papers. <clears throat> Within four to six months, it seems like, they're subsequently served with the second one, divorce. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine transitioning, going through all this transitioning stuff, and maybe battling two or possibly three of those top five stressors. Oh my gosh. So that's why resiliency is so important. It's important for everybody. I suffer, I'll share something personal real quick. I suffer from severe depression. I live in Tehachapi, about 45 minutes away from Edwards. And it seems like during the winter time, that dark cloud just hovers over the mountain. And I also have what's called seasonal affective disorder. It's very, very hard for me. I cannot wait until the springtime hits so I can be out in the sunshine. So I'm struggling a lot too myself, just to let you all know, but I'm trying to be resilient. I'm getting my butt on the treadmill. I'm trying to take a peek outside when there is a glimmer of sunshine. Uh, I take my service dog for a walk. I listen to music. I'm, I'm trying to do as much as I can to st still stay mentally healthy. It's important. It's important for everybody. But with that, if any of you are battling some of the things that I am, there's help out there. That's why we're going over this slide. That's why it may be important for you. So the main thing is to seek help somewhere, wherever you can get it. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, okay? If you're battling with any of that now too, especially with COVID, please reach out to somebody. You can reach out to us too. We can help you maybe virtually like we're doing now, okay? You all ready for a 10 minute break? 10 minute break, everybody. DOD TAP is where you can access your e-forms that needs to be digitally signed twice. Moving on, here's the e-benefits website, or just Google e-benefits, make sure it looks like this. You will register by hitting that top blue button to the right that says register. Again, you will register initially with your CAT card as soon as you're in the program, assign a username, password, so you can access this very, very valuable website resource. Okay, you can begin to apply for disability under uh, what's known as the Benefits Delivery and Discharge Program. Here's the window though, please catch this, it's important. When you're within 180 days to 90 days before your last day of active duty. So you can go on there, hit apply for disability, okay? 
It's going to start asking you probing questions as it relates to your health. They want to get you to specify a lot of things. Here's our suggestion. Any of those questions that they start wanting you to specify, leave them as open-ended as possible. Still undergoing, should be physical. Still undergoing further evaluation, yada, yada, yada. You all catch the drift? Because they're wanting to do that so they can exclude you or deny your disability. So keep all of those answers as open-ended as possible until you complete the process, okay? Here's what's good about that. If you take advantage of the BDD and you do it this way, however long it takes for them to assign you a disability rating, they're gonna backdate it to your last day of active duty. Isn't that cool? That's why it's important for you, okay? So again, this is a mandatory requirement. So please do this, register on e-benefits today and then go back into your TAP dashboard and you can mark that off as yes. I did register on e-benefits today. Any questions? Okay, on here you'll be able to see <clears throat> military personnel file. That's where you'll get your DD-214. VA letters, you'll get that once you're assigned a disability rating. So say for instance, you get a disability rating of 30% or more, that's where you're gonna get that letter. It says, yeah, yeah, so-and-so is Disabled to the VA, compensable, collecting this amount, 30%. If you're seeking federal employment, you're gonna upload that in the application manager through USA Jobs, because you have veteran preference. You have veteran, more priority in veteran hiring. Okay, 30% or more, uh, you can be eligible to be hired under special hiring authority. You must have a disability rating of 30% or more to be hired that way. That's where you'll get this letter from. Moving on, this is the most comprehensive transition website out there, okay? It's on your Mill Connect Portland instruction sheet, military-transition.org. Any possible resource you can even fathom will probably be on here. This website was designed by Mr. Brian Niswander. He's an Air Force Academy graduate. Let's go to resources. Resources, military, look at all of these icons, everybody. Tap, we'll click that in a few minutes. Well, let's go to the top. <clears throat> I already talked about one. Mentorship, right? Mentor. We already talked about American Corporate Partners, right? That's where you'll get all of the contact information, everybody, if you want to seek a mentor through the American Corporate Partners. Which should come up shortly. Are some of you clicking and following along via the web as well? Okay, but anyway, you get the gist. I don't want to wait all day for this thing to come up. Maybe it will sometime today. So we'll go back to resources and then we'll click on tap. So I already warned you of the extreme loads of information that we want all of you to digest in a short period of time, right? So you click on the tap tab on here. Research shows that you should attend tap more than once. We have a lot of service members do that due to the overwhelming knowledge and information that is gonna be presented to everybody. Tap online, that's what all of you are going to do now amidst COVID, right? So refer to this website. We're also gonna send you all of the other items that you will need as we already talked about when we started the brief. 
service specific information and we're all Air Force including myself and uh, Sergeant Ibarra our readiness NCO here at the Airman Family Readiness Center Edwards Air Force Base thank you for being here Tech Sergeant Ibarra So everyone, all of these useful icons under resources, this is no joke. If you were to click in every single one of them, you will get lost in knowledge and uh, research, no joke, for at least three months. Now Brian wants me to relay something to you, the web designer of this website. Dean, please let all the veterans know if they come across any entity, agency, a service group that would be beneficial to veterans, Please have them email me at the website, and I'll make sure I incorporate that. So a lot of things now out there, service dogs for veterans, whatever it may be that you may think may be valuable to service members transitioning and thereafter. If you don't see it on here, please let Brian know, the web designer, okay? Any questions on this ultimate website? Please have that baby in your, your uh, favorites. How many of you visit this wonderful website, my personal favorite, known as military.com? Please make this baby your favorites as well. This is so useful, I can't even stress it enough. Look at the, other than the current events as it pertains to military service, look at the tabs on top, benefits, news. How does it pertain to TAP, meaning veteran job? military life, spouse and family. All of these are important. If you click on the benefits tab, everyone, especially if you're retiring, it seems like retiree benefits change day to day nowadays, right? They are ahead of the knowledge curve, believe it or not, over even AFPC sometimes. Don't ask me how they do it, but they do it. So you wanna be in the know, you go to military.com and you click on benefits, they're gonna give you all the latest relevant information and you will be in the know. And then educate others that may not know about it. Click on veteran jobs. Go to career advice. And look up all those articles under career advice. Lots of great articles for you. Do's and don'ts of a cover letter. 10 standout things for an effective resume. Number one don't of a cover letter. I mention this quite often, but I'll be, I'm so surprised when service members say, hey Dean, can you review my cover letter? They've already violated the number one don't. Number one don't of a cover letter, if you decide to utilize one, is Overuse of the I pronoun, please don't do that. Sometimes the I pronoun is unavoidable on a cover letter, but it's not your autobiography. Try to get away from the I pronouns as much as possible, okay? But these are effective marketing tools that you can utilize where you will be that quality name brand. You're not doing something everyone else is doing that maybe, not, maybe uh, may not necessarily help you, okay? Great, great stuff out here. Here's what I like about it. They give you all the good, bad, and the ugly that's out there. I wanna be in the know of everything, okay? A big spotlight that I've been tracking is toxic leadership, toxic environments in the military service. Any of, with, uh, any of you with me following that stuff? Okay, we just heard of the, uh, the Navy captain on the Roosevelt being relieved, right? We just heard of the Secretary of the Navy being forced to resign, right? Yeah, all that stuff is probably going to be on here. So I like to be in the know, I don't know, that's just me, but utilize that for whatever you think may be useful for you. And last but not least, you want to refer to this, especially now, uh, VA.gov, okay? So when you get the email for the April TAP curriculum virtual, you're gonna see this website, and you're gonna also see the link on how to get the VA participant guide that will accompany the VA module. 
And that's mandated for everybody to do that module for VA benefits and services. Everyone tracking? Okay, wonderful. Any questions so far? No questions, okay, moving on. Those of you that are separating, you must meet the uh, Air Force recruiter. If you're here at Edwards, I don't know what they'll do at March, but this will be on your uh, out processing checklist that you've met with the recruiter to see if you're still going to serve the uh, Guard or Reserve, okay? Please make sure when you review your DD-214, Tech Sergeant Neary, the recruiter here, he normally talks about what's called an RE code, re-entry or re-enlistment code that will be assigned to you on your 214. Please make sure you validate that that's correct for your circumstance. Make sure no one fat fingered it and mischaracterized your service. Okay, very, very important. Everyone catch that? Yes. Okay, awesome. Verification of military experience and training. This will be a requirement, a career readiness standard. All of you should pull this today. How do you pull it? You go to dodtap.mil. On the home page, you scroll to the bottom right, you're gonna see a link that says, request my VMAT. Please make sure you do that today or soon and verify all of that information that's on your VMAT as correct and accurate. If you run into any errors or omissions, you're going to contact our MPS. They most likely in turn will refer you to the total force center at AFPC. But stay on it nonetheless, okay? You will need that when you attend the TAP workshop, and that will help you translate all of your military skill sets into a career, depending on whether you want to still remain in that career or you want to be a career switcher. <clears throat> a number of job seeker types that you may become. You may be undecided. You don't know what you want to do now, but you can still utilize this information and see what type of marketability you have for employment, okay? This is what we already talked about. This is the premier Department of Labor resource for all things career exploration and what is required into those career fields. It's called the ONET Online. On the ONET Online, it'll give you the dictionary, a title for all these careers, any careers that are out there, and what those requirements are. The type of technologies that they utilize, the minimum education level that is required or suggested for that occupation, et cetera, et cetera. Any of you have high school children? Please show them this ONET online or utilize this so you can be your child's best career counselor. A lot of high school counselors don't even know about this resource. So all of you, just knowing about the ONET online will give you a leg up over one of your competitors that may not know it that's out on the outside, okay? Dante's resources, again, all things uh, education, please contact the education office. Okay. America Job Centers, they're all throughout the nation. All of you have priority at any America Job Center by way of what's known as the DOL Gold Card. That gives you priority at these centers. You go to the head of the line. You say, hey, I'm a transitioning veteran. I'm here to see one of the counselors that are here strictly for veterans. There are two of them. Local Veterans Employment Rep, Disabled Veterans Outreach Program Rep. You don't have to have a disability to see the DVOP. They do the same thing, only thing, one is assigned to the Workforce Innovation. That's the DVOP person, but you don't really need to know that. Just know by way of that gold card, when you go into any America Job Center, you go to the head of the line, okay? They know about those jobs or employers that are specifically looking for veteran talent. Please remember that. Any questions on the ONET? We suggest maybe since you have a lot of time, if you are bored, go ahead and tinker around on the ONET online. It'll give you licensing and certification and in apprenticeship information. GI Bill utilization. 
And we already showed you the DOD TAP.mil. mill. Military Occupational Code Crosswalk. This is required by everybody. This is normally done on the first day of TAP. So if you guys were all here physically on Monday, I normally host this module. This is the actual translator where we utilize your VMET and the ONET online that we just talked about. Through this module, you will complete what's known as the gap analysis worksheet. Here's what it looks like for those of you who can see it. First page is a three column page, relatively easy. What are all those skills and abilities you have that will be primarily listed on your VMET that you're exiting service with? This column to the right are all the things that you're going to be able to research and pull up depending on that lofty career that you're pursuing through the ONET online. And it'll tell you and list all of those requirements. So if you match up what you have now with what is needed as closely as possible you will be that hard brand to beat, everyone tracking. You may research, say if you're enlisted, you're exiting with your CCAF degree that the Air Force expects you to complete as a minimum. You may see on here, minimum education required in that new career is a bachelor's level. So you've already identified here what you need to fill in known as a gap. This is what's known as the gap analysis worksheet. It is a two-sided form. On the back is everything pertinent to two things, and we're going to talk more about that. So everyone, again, must complete this module, must complete this career readiness standard for capstone. We must see this completed form when you attend the capstone event. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. So again, America Job Centers, that's where you'll get uh, additional assistance post-transition, <coughs> Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, basically out here, those are known as the green jobs. Abundance of sunshine, though not today, it's raining, through solar paneling, solar farms. Wind energy, like the town that Tick Sergeant and Barr and I are from, Tehachapi, they have a lot of wind turbine, wind companies out there. They are aggressively hiring veterans for those type positions as well. The state also gives grant money so you don't even tap into your GI benefits in some of these careers. Any questions so far? All right. These are the Air Force pool website. So any enlisted members out there, have any of you completed Air Force pool yet or plan to? Okay, I would suggest you stay on top of it. How many, uh, how many months you have left in your service commitment? Uh, okay, stay on top of it and of course get that stuff done. Now I have a question. So this is normally a rule. Security forces member doesn't want to have anything to do with law enforcement. That's a norm. Uh, should they True or false, still do Air Force pool according to the security forces, uh, AFSE, yes or no? Why or why not? Yes. Yes, okay, why do you say yes? Just because it's mutual to you, Navy doesn't, uh, Navy still like saves energy, so it helps them in his career. Absolutely, absolutely. Or say, what if they're doing a career switch and then they're maybe eight, nine months into that new career and, and they can't stand it? And that's something they may have to fall back on, right? So they've done that credential or that certification that's already recognized by a civilian entity. It doesn't say United States Air Force on that certification because a lot of employers don't value those certs, believe it or not, or that certificate to say United States Air Force on it. That's why they came up with the Air Force pool, because it's actually given from outside professional entities where they test your knowledge base and they give you that actual certification that, yes, you can put on a resume. So, yes, you should still do that, even though you don't plan on being a security forces member, just as an example. 
Sometimes the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, right? So, yeah, something to think about. So, Air Force members, just Google Air Force Pool. Go through all that process. Highly suggested that you get all those certifications according to your AFSs. Higher ranking individuals, you have more opportunities available to you if you're enlisted to get additional management certifications. EMP, you heard of that? Yeah. Look into it. So any questions so far on the cools? Nope? Okay. This is US MAP apprenticeship programs. This is known as the skill bridge. Before, this was only available to uh, Marine Corps, Navy, Coast Guard. Finally, the Air Force has gotten on board, and it's been about two and a half years. They finally brought it to Edwards before they were sending everybody down to Miramar through the Marine Corps. Again, point of contact if you want to do DOD skill bridge or career skills program. Ms. Vita Evans at the education office. Start the process early. I would effectively say you must have at least eight, nine months retainability in your military service commitment. Don't wait, start the process if you're interested in this, okay? Dante's, all things education. Just Google Dante's, make sure it has that same icon on the top left of this screen now, number 12. On Dante's, you will see an icon known as careerpathdecide.org. That is another wonderful military translator. You could put in your AFSC under Career Path Decide, and it'll show you all those civilian careers that you could possibly market yourself for. Everyone catch that. Please circle that or make a bippy on your uh, No Connect Portlet form. It is on there, careerpathdecide.usalearning.gov. A great useful tool. Already showed you this one. Again, be familiar with DOD TAP. Again, friendly reminder. Please remember, we have to capture your digital signature twice. One for today and one at the end for capstone. So once we have you into the next phase of uh, capstone review, you can already go in there and digital sign again for capstone. That's not going to count till you ultimately attend capstone event where we verify you've met all the items and then we sign it and we send it to your first sergeant. Okay, once your first sergeant signs it, it'll go back into your tap dashboard as a completed form. Once it's complete, it'll have the DOD seal subdued in the form. You all are going to ensure you print it out and make sure you have a printed copy with you at your out processing appointment. These are one of the check and balances we have in place. So no one thinks that they can omit this capstone event because if you don't have that printed completed copy, they will not allow you to out process. And again, please make sure you attend capstone at least 90 days prior to your out processing. Please do not wait until the last minute or forget about it. And you call us up matter of factly saying, hey, I need to sign out a virtual we're going to verify if that capstone has been completed or not. If it has not been completed, you will be required to do it or they will not let you out process. We just want to make sure everyone understands that. Okay? Does anyone have a question on capstone? I think now that's the fifth time we've mentioned it. I have a question. Okay, please ask. Um, if you are already past the 90-day mark, how does that work? Okay, very good question. If you're already under the 90-day mark, we're going to allow you to do capstone just as soon as you're through with all the TAP curriculum. Okay. So after today, we're going to send out the instructions uh, as if you were attending the class with all of the items that you're going to need to be required to do through JKO, Joint Knowledge Online. You have to go through all of those modules via Joint Knowledge Online. Make sure you have those completed certificates showing that you have completed each required module. That will also be due, yes, for Capstone. Great question. Any other questions? Awesome. Okay, I already talked about this. America Job Centers, you have priority by way of what? 
Question and answer time. The what card? Okay, by way of what card? No, no, it's called the DOL Gold Card. Okay, the DOL Gold Card. So you can Google America Job Center. You may not necessarily know the town that you're going to be moving to. You might just know the zip code per se. You'll type in that zip code on the search vehicle and it'll show you all the America Job Center is there, okay? This one is very, very important. We're gonna to go to this right now. Please make sure you write this down. Please make sure you pull that up if you're on the web now. The dol.gov slash vets website. We're gonna go there now. So this is the Department of Labor, dol.gov slash vets. This is pertinent to all veterans. This is gonna be the most important website you will refer to post-transition, especially now amidst COVID, okay? So we'll go there now. They revamped this website, and unfortunately, it's not better to navigate, it's a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna go there and show you the main thing. So of course, you're gonna click on veterans. Vet preference, let's go there real quick. This is where you will go to see if you have veteran preference. Especially important for everybody to know that, especially separatees like I was. How many of you that are separating think you want to come back to federal service? And it doesn't have to be through DOD, any federal alphabet agency. Any of you? Okay. Well, let me just say, as a separate T Air Force, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm back at federal service. I had 10 years in. As soon as you come back to federal service, you have that preference, you get your foot in the door, you buy back your military service time, and it counts towards civilian retirement. Any of you heard that already? Yeah. yeah, very, very valuable, especially if you have 10 years or more as a separating member, you come back to federal service, you find out via your DD-214 what your military deposit is. You pay that back and then they, they backdate your scud date. So you're already accruing more vacation time Service time that's already, I can't believe in four years I'm gonna be eligible for retirement already. It's amazing. Something to consider, okay? I was corrected on this about three years ago. I thought you served 36 months honorably. I thought vet preference was a given. No, not necessarily so. So that's why we're showing you this now. So we're gonna to go to vet preference advisor. And then it's going to say, begin vet preference advisor. It's going to ask you all these questions. When you served, the dates during you served, if you were on a campaign, et cetera, et cetera. And then it'll kick out. Yes, based on your answers, it looks like you have vet preference. Or no, based on the dates of when you served, you do not have veteran preference. We highly suggest all of you do that and retain that copy and put it into your I Love Me book. We're going to show you the I Love Me book after the next break. Okay, we suggest all of you start doing a transition portfolio, otherwise known as an I Love Me book. So let's move on. Okay, all of you that are gonna continue in the Guard or Reserve, or all of you for that matter, should be very, very familiar with this agency known as USERA. Have any of you heard of them? Okay, USERA could also do this. Say you have seven years or less of service, you possibly wanted to go back to the job you had prior to service entry, this is the agency that could possibly help you do that. Put you back on par with any promotions that occurred while you were serving your nation, any pay raises, et cetera, et cetera. Here's why they're also important. 
Say you're marketing yourself for employment and you encounter someone that's overtly discriminating against you because you're a veteran, this is the agency that you want to report that to, okay? So say also primarily you're serving Guard or Reserve and you get deployed or you get activated and then your civilian employer starts to harass you because of that, these will be your bulldogs. They will be your advocate. Okay, so please remember about you, Sarah. They are there to help you. Okay? Any questions on you, Sarah? Awesome. Oh, know your rights under you, Sarah. True or false? During an interview, a civilian employer can ask you what type of discharge you received. True or false? False. false? false. False is the correct answer. They're trying to help these veterans that got into some hiccups, maybe misdiagnosed, undiagnosed PTSD, got into a little bit of trouble. They're trying to help these kind of veterans. Two true real life movies I want to mention. Maybe some of you have seen them. The forerunner was known as the Antoine Fisher story. Any of you seen that? I think it came out in like the mid 90s. Antoine Fisher, true life person, had suffered trauma prior to even joining the Navy. I thought I had a hard life. When I saw that movie, I, I better sit down and shut up. But uh, Antoine Fisher got into some hiccups while he was in the Navy, had to go see the Navy shrink played by Denzel Washington. In the end, he worked through those issues and came out uh, resilient. I think now he's still a director or something like that down in LA. But this is something for everybody to know, okay? This agency can possibly help you. I chair a committee downtown known as the Antelope Valley Veterans Employment Committee. We're trying to help all of these veterans that got into some hiccups this way so they can effectively market themselves for employment. Okay? They also do a case-by-case -case records expungement for some of these veterans, depending on what the charges are. So I want all of you to know that there is help out there. They're starting to do more and more things as they know it relates to PTSD and your service if you've been deployed, et cetera, et cetera. So please keep this in mind. Next movie, probably none of you seen it. Have any of you seen the movie, Thank You for Your Service? No. Another true life movie. Okay, how come no veterans see it? Just another military movie? Yeah, thank you for your service, an excellent movie. My wife wanted to see it on a Sunday. This old man rather uh, take a nap on a Sunday. Reluctantly, I went with her to the movie theater to watch Thank You for Your Service. I thought I'd nap in the theater. I was engaged the whole time, everyone, because it's what we do here in the Airman Family Readiness Center. It's what I've personally witnessed as military service members transition. I'll give you the brief synopsis, I won't give the game away, but it highlights four Army combat veterans. One of them went away very, very quickly, is all I say. What they experienced in combat, and more importantly, what they experienced when they came back as they transitioned, like all of you were about to do, and how they struggled maybe in finding employment. What a powerful movie. I was engaged the whole time, just to let you all know I'm secure in my manhood to admit to you that movie brought me to tears on numerous occasions. It is a powerful movie, it's true. One more thing I'll give away that they showed in the movie. They showed a agency that used to be up north here in California. I think they referred to it as a pathway home, but some of you may recollect recently one of these PTSD vets shot up two of the therapists there. So guess what happened after that? They had to close that down. One less support agency for these PTSD vets now. So if you get a chance, check that movie. You know, it highlights being resilient, being engaged with all of the things that will come into play during your transition. Now we're going to go on to TAP. So when you click on program, you'll click under tap, what we're talking about now. Scroll down, 
You'll see the link, access to TAP virtual curriculum. You will see the link to download all the relevant participant guides for all the modules that you will attend, okay? This is what you're gonna to need to do in the next few, two, three weeks. Does everybody have this website down now? dol.gov slash vets. And then you will click on programs and then transition assistance program. And this is where you will get all of the information. I'll make sure I have this in the email as well. Okay? Any questions? Okay. We're going to take another 10 minute break. Okay, moving on. Okay, so this is the slide we normally show for everybody for the uh, <clears throat> TAP workshop. Again, you must meet the career readiness standards uh, assigned to you according to your tier. Mandatory to attend the workshop, some exemptions. I already showed you this, the USERA. I already told you about these two reps, the DBOP and the LIBER at any America Job Center. Pop quiz time, you have priority by way of what card? Gold card. DOL gold card, excellent. I get passionate about this slide. Two things that will dictate your career path other than your chosen field of endeavor. Whoever can see the screen, and one of them is on the screen itself, a hint. Two things that will dictate your career path other than your chosen field of endeavor. Anyone want to guess what they are? Number 19 on the slide here. Geography. Very good. Geography. Very good. So that's the backside of the gap analysis worksheet. You will need to be deciding or comparing which states you may want to move to depending on where the jobs are most plentiful, et cetera, et cetera, highest pay, and whatever the factors are. The next one is known as LMI, labor market information. Each state has its own labor market information, okay? This is stuff that is normally overlooked by job seekers, okay? So right now, we're going to talk about a couple of these things. I get a little passionate about this slide when it comes to labor market information. And one of the states that's on the slide. So uh, I have experience on two states that's on this slide. Can anyone guess which one predominantly? Okay, no, not California. It is Hawaii. It is Hawaii. Uh, I don't know if you can see. I'm wearing my Aloha shirt. But I have experience, I'm from Hawaii. Let's talk about that. We're gonna talk about geography and LMI at the same time with the Hawaii. Any of you planning to move there? No one? No. How come? How come you're not planning to move to Hawaii? Don't you hear it's paradise? Expensive. There you go. Stuck on the island. There you go, yeah, cabin fever, island fever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the old adage, nice place to visit, but you don't want to live there. Take it from me, that is Hawaii. Any of you experienced rush hour in the 405 in Southern California? Yes, you have, right? If you're in Honolulu, the island I'm from, if you're downtown anytime after 2.30, you might as well stay there, have a beer, go watch a movie, whatever it may be, because if you're trying to get to the side of the island that I'm from, heading towards the North Shore, you will literally be in standstill traffic. 405 is nothing compared to the H1 in Honolulu. Talking about LMI, predominantly what type of jobs you think are going to be there predominant in Hawaii? Tourism. Tourism, service industries, right? Food and beverage. You think they're going to pay those salaries that are going to help you stay in that high cost area, Hawaii? No. no. Yeah. Anyone know the median cost of a home in Hawaii? Probably close to five hundred thousand. 
It's a little higher than that, but you're pretty close. It's about $810,000. Do you think that'll buy you a plush 2,500 square foot home with all the latest amenities to include a pool in your backyard? No, you'd be lucky if it's built in the mid 70s and it's actually falling apart. So take it from me, don't move to Hawaii unless you have three things. Just remember the number three. Someone very wealthy who leaves you an inheritance of over three million, you rob a bank of over the same amount, or you hit the lotto, which is why I play every week. Something else to note about Hawaii, they have an extreme teacher shortage there. If you are minimally credentialed as a teacher, guess what Hawaii wants you? Last time I checked, guess what they're going to start you at? $65,000 a year. So a lot of teachers get kind of fantasized over with the idea of moving to Hawaii. They want to go take that offer. I tell you what, within a year, they are back to where they started from. You all know Hawaii is a very costly area. Not everyone wants to live on an island. Now and after a while, you're just going in circles. The same place, same thing. Food for thought. Hawaii has a low unemployment rating. I think the last time I checked last October, it was like 2.8% unemployment rate. So high probability you'd find employment in Hawaii, but guess what? They'll be in them service industry jobs related to tourism. I have other work experience in this state. Anyone know this state to the top left? Arkansas? No, close to Arkansas. It's Missouri. I earned the right to call it, I call it misery. Holding a professional license back in the day when I worked in misery. Great job offer. I was making bank. Liberal expense account. I squeaked some expenses through there. I thought for sure they'd deny, went right through. But you wanna know what? With that labor law there in misery, they were literally working me like an indentured slave. I was on call 24 seven, doesn't matter if it was Christmas, Thanksgiving, to recall. What a dog's life, let me tell you. I was working 55 to 65 hour work weeks. Any of you wanna do that or is anyone doing that now? No one? No. Yeah, anyone wanna do something like that? Depends on the week, I guess. Depends on the week, yeah, sure does. These are things to consider. So here's what we wanna say with that. Whatever state you plan on moving to, you wanna research the labor laws of that state. A lot of us heard of uh, right to work states, correct? Anyone going to Arizona? Arizona is a right to work state. So you can research this if you don't believe me. Google Arizona labor law. Under Arizona labor law, they are only required by that labor law to pay you 10, 10 days paid sick leave. Anything above that is at the discretion of the employer. So let me tell you, knowing what I know, I would not move to Arizona unless I was working for Uncle Sam. So other things to consider. Right to work states before they could compulsory force you to join a union. Now I think they changed the law on that. They can't do that. But whenever you hear right to work state, that's gonna be indicative that the labor laws are written for the benefit of the employer. So if you're an employee, guess what? That's not you. That's why it's important. That's why that six key, one of the six keys to a successful transition, research. You wanna research all of these factors. Why would you make a poor selection and then maybe you're the primary breadwinner like I was? You relocate your family to that employer, that state, and you're working all the dog on time, you have no quality of life. Isn't it all about work-life balance? Food for thought, something to consider. So each state has a job board for their state. Since we're already on this slide, I wanna talk about this. Separating members, you can apply for unemployment. You paid into the system, you're entitled to unemployment. California, I think now, especially with COVID, they bumped it up. I think it's 650 a week or 600, something like that. But nonetheless, if you do not have a college start date under post 
consider applying for unemployment. Okay, you've already again paid into it. What I'm about to tell you now is perfectly legal. I'm not gonna tell you to do anything illegal. You can apply for unemployment in California or any state you plan on moving to. So if you plan on moving out of California, call that state unemployment and see what they pay in unemployment insurance benefit. For obvious reasons, you're going to apply with whichever state pays higher, right? Pretty sure it may be California. So say for instance, you're moving to New York, you're going to apply for unemployment in California. You must, though, as a stipulation for California unemployment, be enrolled in CalJobs. This is their job bank, almost identical to USA Jobs. So technically, even though you're in New York, hypothetically, you're still looking for employment in California. Does everyone understand that? Okay, perfectly legal. Any questions on the state job boards? So again, when you do the gap analysis worksheet on that uh, military occupational code crosswalk, that is the backside, all things LMI and geography. Public and community service opportunities. A lot of these agencies look favorably upon hiring veterans. You know why? They know you're used to working within the bureaucratic structure and they know you can pay attention to dictates, policies, guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these agencies also give vet preference. Vet preference is not only for government jobs, believe it or not. So again, do your research to find out if that agency gives you vet preference. AmeriCorps, you can do a stint through AmeriCorps. Back in my day, they called it the old job corps. You can also do federal internships through AmeriCorps. Or say you're taking advantage of post 9-11, but you're doing computer-based colleges, you can sign up to be a mentor at one of these youth camps through AmeriCorps. They will pay you a small stipend as you do your computer-based college courses. Win-win, don't you think? Or red flag on a resume if there's long employment gaps in your employment history. This could be a way to fill that employment gap where you're still volunteering, still doing things civically for your uh, state, city, whatever it may be. True or false, you can put volunteer experience on a resume. I probably already gave the answer away. Yes, it is true. So keep in mind, red flag on a resume, extended gaps in your employment history. But maybe now after you transition, you can say, hey, I had an employment gap because I wanted to decompress from service. I had 60 days of leave. That's why you see I was unemployed for maybe two months. Something to consider. AmeriCorps, if you want to take advantage of the career skills program, maybe you want to do it through AmeriCorps. They're nationwide. So many incentives for veterans, troops to teachers, troops to truckers, uh, helmets to hard hats, troops to psychology techs. Do your research, see what's out there. Go on the military-transition.org website that we showed you. May have a lot of uh, resources there for that. 23, moving on, federal employment opportunities. Three ways to acquire federal positions. Merit, we all have merit maybe by way of our veteran preference. Special hiring authority we talked about. Do you remember what percentage that was to be hired under that, anyone? To be hired under special hire, what, go ahead. 30%. 30% or more to be hired under special hiring authority. Guess what that means? That means they don't even need to post a job on USA Jobs. If you meet the qualifications for that job, you have that percentage, 30% or more, they can hire you right off the street. They've done quite a bit of hires that way right here at Edwards. Competitive appointment like everyone else or under, there you go, vet preference. We call that the precursor to the current VOW Act of 2011. VEOA came out in 1998. All that basically did was give vets point preference if they were qualified. Any questions on federal employment? I'll give you a couple uh, quick tips for federal employment. If you're seeking to come back to federal service, 
Write this down, remember it. If you upload a standard two-page private civilian resume to your USA jobs, you will never get selected. Please, if you want to uh, market yourself for federal employment, build your resume in the resume profiler under USA Jobs. It must be three to five pages. It must have certain information that they require. Please remember that. We also, once we get out of COVID-19, we hold monthly federal employment workshops here where you'll get a book and you follow all these guidelines according to that. I promise you, you will be placed in success. You will get a lot of selected and you will get called in for interviews. I've tried the system myself and it does work. That's all I'll say. USA Jobs, all of you should maybe be familiar with it. Go to FANCE, entry level to executive jobs, but remember you don't necessarily have to work for DOD. Department of Agriculture, National Park Service. In fact, I should be working there right now as a full-time ranger. Does anyone know how hard it is to get a full-time ranger position in the National Park Service? It's very, very difficult. It is very, very difficult. Actually had the offer utilizing the same thing that I told you about federal employment, proper resume, et cetera, et cetera. Had the actual offer. Then the hiring freeze kicked in, that offer was rescinded. That's why now I'm having difficulty. Can you imagine being a full park ranger? Oh my God, that's my dream. But I still like doing what I do for all of you. Vet preference, I already showed you this, how to do it, right? DOL.gov slash vets, vet preference advisor under those. If you're a field grade officer and above, you don't automatically get vet preference. It is still contingent upon your disability rating through the VA. So if you're feel great, please remember that. Once you get all of these things, you will need to fill out these SF-15s, put all this supporting documentation into the application manager under your USA Jobs account. It'll help you for all the positions that you may apply to. Must provide acceptable documentation of your preference. Be a copy of ED-214, right? You may not have that <clears throat> within uh, maybe two, three months after you get out. We're going to show you what you need. So did you know this? 120 days before your last day of active duty, you can already begin to apply for federal positions. Of course, you won't have your DD-214. We suggest all of you get this. You get a statement of service that you can use in lieu of the 214, I've been told you can do this through the virtual MPF function. So suggest everyone, all of you get that statement of service, put it into your I Love Me book, and I'll be right back. I'll show that to you. So those of you that can see, please start developing your transition portfolio or your I Love Me book. We have one of our retiring service members do a book, a facsimile of his, table of contents, all the required items for capstone. You see the gap analysis worksheet, ITP, et cetera, et cetera, VMAT, budget, everything that you're going to need to have for the capstone event or anything else among uh, your out-processing or your transition. So please start developing one today. Any questions so far? Uh, we will bypass these Boots to Business slides. If you're interested in becoming an entrepreneur, learning about Boots to Business, just Google it. Again, they want you to establish a profile on SBA Vets Force. Please establish that profile, and you can see all of the Boots to Business entrepreneurship events, not only on the military installations, but in the local communities that you reside in. Already talked about special hiring.
back in the throes of four shaving like 2013, if you had a particular SPD code, it's a three alpha code that is assigned to you. You're being put out to four shaving, no fault of your own. They gave you hiring preference through NAFTA. So speaking of SPD codes, everybody, it stands for Separation Program Designator Code. There are over 600 of them. Oftentimes, I don't get your TAP counseling notice even until after you're through with Capstone, or you're maybe even already out process. But if you get that, if you're one of the lucky ones that gets that, it'll have all that standard information. Hey, if you haven't gone through TAP yet, you must attend this brief that you're all attending, and you must begin to tap your uh, uh, to track your TAP processes. Please open the attachment. Just don't say, oh, it's another TAP email, hit delete. Open that attachment, look at that three alpha code. Make sure you understand that that code is relevant and pertinent to your exiting, okay? Make sure like the RE code on your 214, no one fat fingered it and listed you as a drug user or a derelict. Very, very important. If you're being put out due to four shaving, maybe high year of tenure, sometimes this code will give you additional benefits, additional two years, health care, commissary, BX, all of that. Okay, please remember that. Separating members, if you get a disability rating, you will receive or you will register the VA healthcare system. You will have their VA healthcare card. One January this year, you can use that same card to enter a military installation and also shop at the commissary. Did you all know that? That was effective one January this year. How did I know that before anyone? I already showed it to you, military.com. E6 and above, you can possibly become a junior Air Force ROTC instructor. I know the recruiters in the area. If this interests you, this could be an interim job. Please shoot me an email and I'll put you in contact with them. But again, E6 and above, you could possibly be a junior Air Force ROTC instructor. Already told you about the WIOA Act, right? The green jobs out here, solar paneling, wind energy, and Tehachapi. Some of these you can get hired and be given grant money to be trained up on. Now also in California, they have grant money for veterans to get them into Caltrans occupation. Boost the business, you already know what to do. Permissive TDY and excess leave. Are any of you planning on taking more than 30 days terminal leave? Yes. Okay, please write this down. Request expedited orders. So if you're planning on taking more than 30 days terminal, request expedited orders. It'd be a shame they drag their feet and then you're already in your terminal leave and they say, sorry, uh, you got out process while you're on terminal. Is that cool? No, it is not. Permissive TDY, 20 days, is normally given to retiring members only, still contingent upon mission requirements and commander's approval. You can use permissive TDY in conjunction with your terminal leave or break it up however you'd like. Again, normally for retiring members, still contingent upon mission requirements and command approval. Okay, travel and transportation allowances. I am not the transportation expert. Any questions related to travel and transportation, please contact our travel transportation office. I've been told their office is down at building 36, 3735, I should say, near the supply building. So please go in there and ask them any transportation questions. They may be able to assist you or call them. Separating members must complete travel within 180 days. Retirees must complete travel within a year. Again, please make sure your DEER's information is updated, especially if you're retiring, you have a newborn. It's very, very important so you can get paid properly. Here's another agency that can help you, Housing and Urban Development. Say you're downtown, you're in a lease and you run into problems with your landlord, you should probably go see the base legal office, okay? Please remember the homeless vets care line. A lot of homeless vets are out there. They're doing lots, taking lots of strikes to help homeless veterans. 
They broke ground on a homeless veteran shelter right here in the Alamo Valley. Another agency, Department of Education. All colleges should have a veteran aid rep. Okay, so please seek them out to make sure you're properly paid under your GI Bill post 9-11 ballot. Here's another uh, resource that you can utilize if you're pursuing higher education, studentveterans.org. Go on out there and see what's available to you. Going back to resiliency, mental health and well-being. Suicide has been in focus recently. Please remember the veteran crisis line. They say 22 veterans commit suicide per day. You can go on the website through the veteran crisis line to take this self-assessment test to see if you have any of these red flag indicators. General anxiety disorder, alcohol use, depression, suicide prevention, what we just mentioned, and PTSD, that seems to be a big thing that's out there. Shared with you all some personal information. I suffer from severe depression. Let's say, for instance, I didn't have good resiliency and I was abusing substances. What do you think I'd be more at risk for? Suicide. Suicide, exactly. That's why maybe the numbers are so high. PTSD comes into play too. PTSD and depression seem to overlap each other in a lot of cases. So please, bottom line, get help wherever it may be. Through this website, through the Veteran Crisis Line, any of the resources we showed you earlier. Chaplains, Military Family Life Counseling. In transition, let's talk about that now. So say, for instance, you don't feel comfortable seeing any supporting agencies on base. This is an agency that is downtown in Palmdale known as the VA Vet Center or Antelope Valley Vet Center. Go out there and see one of the counselors related to any of this resiliency. They don't take any records. If anyone from base asks them if you've been seeing them, they cannot confirm or deny it. I will give you a name. Her name is Ms. Krishna Flores. She normally comes out here to address all of you during this precept briefing. Again, the Palmdale VA Vet Center. The separation history and physical, we're going to send you the accompanying slides with the trifold as we mentioned earlier. Again, friendly reminder, within 72 hours of receipt of orders, you must contact uh, Nurse Franklin at the BOMSI office to get on their tracker for your shipping physical. Please remember to get all of your medical documentation put on a CD. All this transitional health care stuff, we're going to send you all those slides as part of the TAP week curriculum with the point of contact. Her name is Miss Sonia Berry. So you will get all of these, everybody. Affordable Care Act is still law out there, okay? One thing I'd like to pass on, even if you have a disability rating of 0% to the VA, you will be in compliance with the Affordable Care Act until they do away with it entirely. Health Insurance Marketplace, separatees, please write this down, www.healthcare.gov slash veterans. The next slide will be the 1-800 number. 800-318-2596. Open enrollment has ended effective 31 January this year. You will have to wait for uh, 1 November this year to have open enrollment. Financial management. It's important to start financial planning, especially if you're separating like we mentioned. Please have three to six months of living expenses saved, especially if you're a primary breadwinner. Please be tracking all your TSP contributions. If you don't dip into that post-separation, you're going to be heavily penalized. All those gains distributions you may have made will evaporate quickly. Retirement. Explore all your post-military retirement supplements. 
Retiring members, one of them is this, the survivor benefit plan. You must make a survivor benefit plan election upon retirement, not only to protect your retired pay, but also set up your retiree pay account. It's a dual purpose form, so please remember to do that. We will talk more about that later. Taxes as they relate to whatever state you will be retiring in. California, again, if you retire in California, they want to dig deep into your pocket into your retirement pay. Compare what you have now to what's available on the outside. Consider non-tangible benefits, theaters, gym, rec programs, commissary and exchange. Set pay, any of you getting set pay? Very important that you know this. If you're receiving separation pay and later on you get a compensable service connected rating through the VA, they're going to offset all of that money. They're going to recoup all of that separation pay so you will not see any compensation until you pay that deposit back. That's what this paragraph is about. Unemployment. We already talked about unemployment compensation. You can either apply in California or whatever state you plan on going to, for obvious reasons, apply with whoever pays higher in unemployment. Just remember though, under NDAA 2016, you can't collect both, full monthly post 9-11 and unemployment. Now it's one or the other. So if you don't have a college start date yet, consider applying for unemployment. Please be aware of general money management. Some of you, depending on your tier, will have to have this filled out, this career readiness standard known as the TAP Financial Planning Worksheet filled out in its entirety, okay? This will be required come capstone. So please begin budgeting and financial planning now, especially if you're separating. If you have a large debt you're trying to pay down, please utilize this resource. It's called powerpay.org. I utilize this and really paid off all my debt. My FICO score got over 750. Wonderful resource there. Know your FICO score. We don't need to see it, but that's important. Already established three to six months of living expenses. Can you have more? Absolutely, you can have more. Are you in the 17% of Americans that have that emergency savings fund? Only you can answer that. We are a resource for you here to help you financial plan. We have resources. Mr. Becky, who is our expert counselor, Mr. Arola, and Ms. Nicole Purcell help you all things financial plan. Do you know what your personal savings and investments are? What do they say? Diversify, diversify, diversify. Each state has their own benefits in, in addition to the standard VA ones. Veterans, if you're remaining in California, just Google CalVet. You can also get this handbook PDF off the website and they will show you all the benefits that you have being a cow vet in California. One of them was very valuable for me since I didn't have post 9-11 to pass down to my children. I am 20% disabled. My oldest daughter was able to get her bachelor's degree through this uh, California tuition fee waiver. Paid for her tuition. What percentage of disability do you need veterans to have that same? 0% will give you that. However, say for instance you move to Georgia, that same tuition benefit, you must have a 50% or more disability. So again, each state is different. If you are camp eligible, that means you're being put out due to four shaving, you have two year additional commissary and exchange privileges. Or even if you're separating, once you're assigned a disability rating, you have the VA healthcare card, you can shop at the VX and commissary. 
That was effective January of this year, 2020. We are a voting assistance office here at the Airman Family Readiness Center, okay? Basically, they wanna encourage all service members to register absentee ballot. So your voice counts in the election. Our two representatives is Mr. Glenn Arola and Ms. Uh, Pam Natale. Or look up fvap.gov. Some DMV agencies allow you to register to vote as well absentee ballot. I do that via my DMV here in California. Or Google the Election Assistance Commission. Legal assistance, we will send you all of these slides for legal assistance. Normally we have the JAG officer come here, Captain Johnson. She will be CC'd in the email to you that you attended this virtual today. So we will send you all the uh, legal slides or you already have them in front of you. So we'll go through these real quick. If you're taking terminal leave and you want to work, you must still get that off duty employment letter. You still belong to the auspices of the branch of service you're serving with. Here is their slide for assistance. We'll pause that for a moment. And there is their number. On behalf of the legal office, they want to uh, thank you for your service and wish you the very best. Already talked about the ITP. This is your management plan of how you will be successful. Please begin preparing your five page ITP at least the first initial page, we will be referring to it all through the week during the TAP attendance. VA benefits briefs, benefits and services is mandatory for everybody. We will send you that module connection so you can complete that. Please remember, we must have the completion certificates for all of your required modules. We will also show you the link from Ms. Elizabeth Bush on how you're gonna download the participant guide. So they cover a number of items that you're entitled to, post 9-11, healthcare, everything you could possibly think of through the VA. There you go, VA health, dental, vet center we already talked about. And then now we're gonna talk about the insurances real quick, everybody, okay? All of you should be carrying the max amount of SGLI, right, 400,000. If you have a spouse, you can cover them for additional 100,000. A lot of you don't know you had this. It's known as a rider in uh, insurance fee. Traumatic Service Fins Group Life Insurance. So here's what we want to relay. Please remember that if you're on terminal leave, if you suffer a traumatic event, accident or you're diagnosed with a serious illness, please make sure you let your loved ones know to report that to the nearest casualty office. Make sure again that it's documented part of your medical history, right? May be pertinent for raising your disability rating or giving you one. It's important that this is documented also to apply for that insurance. Payouts under TSGLI range from $25,000 to $100,000 depending on what the issues are. All of you have the option to convert your SGLI to VGLI. Men especially, we have a shorter life expectancy rating than the ladies do. You have a year, 90 days to do that. Please don't wait that long. Convert it as soon as you're able to, but know this, just in the back of your mind, that VGLI is just gonna be supplemental. As you begin to age, especially being a male, in five year increments, you're gonna see those premiums exponentially increase. Then when you're like me, over 55, that last highest premium you were paying will go up at least 3.5 times. You will get sticker shocked. How do you let a policy lapse? You stop paying on the premiums, that policy will lapse. Converted nonetheless, just know in the back of your mind it's going to be supplemental. Those of you that are retiring should have already looked into civilian life insurance. 
Look into term insurance, best bang for your buck. See what you can afford. Get as much as you can afford when it comes to life insurance. Already talked about some of this. You will get this in the VA brief. BDD we talked about. Again, here's the window. Take advantage of it. Do e benefits. 180 days to 90 days prior to your last day of active duty, you can apply for disability through the BDD part. So you click on that, on that e-benefits portion. So you begin to apply for your VA disability benefits under the BDD program. No more quick starts, so don't pay attention to that. Again, we are concluding this brief now. Please again remember to initiate and sign your DOD TAP.mil e-form. Again, we must get your signatures twice, digital. One at the beginning precept, one at the end for capstone. Can you sign that digital prior to capstone event? Absolutely, in fact, we encourage you to do that. Once again, we thank you for your virtual attendance today. Thank you all for your service. Stay safe amongst COVID-19. Take care, everybody.